today. I'm looking forward to spending some time with you this evening or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, we're ex it's exciting because we're both on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So fingers crossed we are. So um, I thank you very, very much for joining me today. And it looks like we've got some folks who are joining us, which is wonderful. It's great to see people who are coming in. Uh, the lovely Joanna is going to be our um, moderator today, the magic behind the badge, the Altenew badge. So thank you, Joanna. Uh, she'll be entering in uh, in the chat. I'm just kind of looking over here to the side of the computer at the chat commentary. Hi, Cece. It's good to see you. Uh, and Joanna will be posting in information and catching any questions that I may be missing um, as we are playing with our stamps and stencils and dies today. So I see that Jane is here. Hi, Sue. I know it's been, it has been a while, Sue. Um, I have been busy with a huge other work project um, and also uh, remote school, <laughs> fourth grade. So that's been, it's been taking up my time. So um, I'm really glad to be here tonight. So thank you. Joni is here. Catherine is in the UK. Giovanna, Hazel, Jacqueline, Trish, uh, Jill, Mary, Stacy. Ah, oh, Stacy is in South Florida. So it's wonderful to see him. And right above her, Mary is in Alberta, Canada, Canada. So it's great to see where folks are joining us from. I'm in Hamburg, Germany right now. Um, this is where I live, although you can probably tell from my accent that this is not where I originally come from. So Oregon is my home state. So if we have any fellow Oregonians in there, just give a give a wave. Uh, yes, and um, Stacy has commented that she's shared, which is wonderful. Thanks for reminding me. And uh, Joanna has also posted, if you share tonight's video while we are live, you can be in for a $15 gift certificate uh, to the Alta News store. Hopefully that hasn't changed <laughs> in my absence. So Joanna, correct me, please, if I'm wrong. But uh, you do need to share while we are live and post in the comments that you have shared and let us know how. Um, and then Joanna will be selecting a lucky winner. So do let us know that you shared so that she uh, has that information. Right, okay, so uh, hello to everybody who has joined, who I haven't quite called out all of the names. Uh, Lori, you're glad you found me. I'm glad that we found each other too. So that's really nice. Massachusetts, South Africa. Oh, what a, what a beautiful country. And um, it looks like West Orange, New Jersey. Fantastic. I love seeing where everybody's coming from. So let me just show you quickly, before we get into the demo, I'm going to show you the stamps and die and stencil that I'm working with today. And we're working with a, a set called Courageous You. So I think you're not getting too much glare from the light on here. You can see this is the Courageous You stamp set. And the focal image is this really huge floral motif. Now this is, I mean, you can see in proportion to my hand, this is about seven inches tall from top to bottom and about five inches wide at, from the leaves to the petals at kind of at the widest point. So, um, Fabulous for slimline cards, and we're going to take a look at, we'll start with a slimline card. Also great for just stamping portions of this in, um, you know, like off the edge of your card. Just a beautiful floral motif. And along with this, we've also got lots of nice sentiments. So you've got, you are, um, you are great here. We've got another one, dare to be different. So those are kind of the main focal uh, sentiments, but then there's also a lot of other ones here. So we've got um, focused and fabulous. We've got let's do what we love and do a lot of it. Um, choose joy. We have some days you just have to create your own sunshine. That's, that's particularly appropriate these days. And this, this is one that I really like. It says, Hey, warrior, keep going. So this is one I think I'm going to make that for my niece who's working as a nurse. So definitely she has earned that. Um, also, in the packaging of this, now this is one of the things that I love about Altenew is that they give you lots of project ideas 
So you've got some card projects. You can kind of get some color inspiration on those flowers. So they've got two here and then two here as well. So you can see some different varieties. And then if you have questions, not so big, I have to peer around it. Then they also include information about what which ink colors they used and so on. So that if you want to replicate that look, then you can. Now, one thing, try and hold this so you can see it. You'll notice on here with this open line flower, you've got lots of different coloring options. So you can color it with um, artist markers, colored pencils, and so on. You can also color it with ink in a stenciling pattern. So if you're looking at how the yellow is on this flower, I'll hold it up a little closer so you can see. This is um, with the help of a stencil that I'll show you. Now this, is, this was something new for me, so I was pretty excited to have a go at this. So let me get it out from my pile here. So this is the Courageous You coloring stencil. There we go, I think you can see that. So you've got two floral stencils as well as the leaves and you simply position the stencil on top of your stamped image and you can use a blending brush, a blending tool, stipple brush, whatever you have on hand to apply the color through there. That will get you a look like this. Oops, can we see that? Okay, you'll see it better when we're doing the demo. So you're able to get some spot coloring, gives you some really interesting effects. And this is something that I was just really happy to play with. And it gives you so many more options with that stamp set. Now, the other thing we have here is the Courageous You die. And this is one great big die. So this is going to cut out the entire piece, which means that you can do some fun layering with it. So those are our three main items today. So I am going to jump right into the demo if we're all good to go. I know that we, our comments have been scrolling along and my hellos to everybody who I haven't said hello to in person. Great to see everybody. Christine and Trish. Giovanna is in Washington State. That's pretty close to Oregon, so we're neighbors. Uh, so is Janice. She's in California. So it's really great to see everybody. So hello and welcome. Alrighty. Now I'm going to switch down my camera. I have a new camera. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, fingers crossed that it works okay. So hang in with me. I'm just going to change this up and we can go to our demo. Oh, good. It worked. <laughs> Technology is great when it works, right? It's not so great when it doesn't. So, okay, we are ready to go. Nikki, you've got this stamp set, stamp and die set, and you have made lots of cards from it. Yeah, I think this is one of those that's just kind of a classic. You can use it for any different kind of occasion. And the sentiments, of course, the sentiments on here are great, but as we know with Alta New stamp sets, you can mix and match those sentiments really nicely, which gives you even more options. Okay, so we're gonna start with this card project and I'm gonna step you through just the basic stamping of it and then we'll take a look at using that stencil with it. So I'm gonna set this aside for right now. Now I've got a piece of um, long, narrow, white cardstock and I'm using um, a nice smooth heavyweight cardstock Kind of like a Nina um, classic crest. I'm gonna use my, my well-loved Misty. I know it's looking a bit rough, but this is a tool that I use pretty much every day. So, it, and I've used it for years. So I was talking with some other uh, fellow crafters and we've all confessed to having paint, ink, uh, cracks in our Misty. Uh, well used and well loved. Okay, so I'm gonna pull off this giant, big, beautiful blossom on here. Give it a tug and I'll set the rest of this aside. And I'm just going to position this here. Now, of course, the stamp is wider than my piece of cardstock. So I'm just gonna kind of plop this down here, get those magnets in place. 
And there we go. And then close this up. You guys know how this works. And I'm going to stamp using my favorite, the Obsidian Pigment Ink. This is going to give me a nice crisp black. I love a good black ink pad. And this is this is my current favorite. So this is the one that's always out on my work surface. It's also covered with, with other ink and paint as they do get. Okay, I'm just ink this all up. And then pop this closed. And then the nice thing about having the Misty on hand for something like this is because this is such a large stamp, it's nice to um, be able to have a, a larger surface rather than our clear acrylic blocks. Okay, and then pull this up and you can see how nicely that stamps. It really, really does stamp beautifully. Okay, I'm going to move this off and kind of clean off the ink on here. I've covered this with clear packing tape, which is why it just kind of wipes right off there. Okay, and then this in here and set it to the side. Okay, so now I'm ready to use my stencil. And for this, I'm going to grab a couple of ink pads. I'm going to be working with uh, Coral Berry and also, let's see, we've got Frayed Leaf. And I'm using the little cubes. Um, these are kind of my go-tos. Of course, you can also use the larger pads if you've got those on hand too. I do need to have a blending brush on hand. So I'm gonna use this one. This is a little guy that I picked up. I don't, don't even know where. That's one that I've got. And then I've also got the really nice Altenew Big Blenders. This one you can tell is one that I usually use for green ink. So I'm gonna keep that with my frayed leaf. So here's what we're gonna do. Now, all you need to do is simply take your stencil and position your flower on top of your flower on here. Now I will say I've got a little black dot on the front of my stencil. This does not come on the stencil. This is one that I did because um, I think it maybe it was late or I wasn't working in great lighting late at night or something. And I was trying to line up the stencil and the flower, could not get it, turned it around all over the place and realized that I was working from the wrong side. So this is my cue to myself. <laughs> this is the front side. Um, it is really easy to line up, as you can see. But uh, yeah, maybe this was just like tired mommy <laughs> trying to align things. Just didn't quite work out. Okay, so when I'm lining this up, I'm generally starting with the area in the center here. And that's going to be a large enough area that kind of positions everything. And then I can sort of scoot things around from there. Now you can uh, stencil by just holding this down, but um, I like to use a little bit of tape just to tap that down so um, it's not sliding. It's not tempting to slide so many different places. Okay, so I've got this tacked down here and I'm going to work with that coral berry. This is one of my favorite colors for flowers, just beautiful. And I'll just get a bit of the ink on my blending brush. I'm gonna start in the center and just work my way out to the petals. Okay, so all of the area that's open is going to be colored. All of the area that's masked off with that stencil is going to remain white. Now I do want to be sure that I'm not, you know, going off the edge. If it helps to mask off those areas, you know, with the sticky notes or um, a little more low tack tape, you can do that too. And I'm using just a really gentle circular motion. Again, working from the center and kind of working my way out. So, oh, I've got some other comments on here. 
Some folks are saying that they have the stamp set, haven't used it in a while, Teresa. Yeah, sometimes you get stamp sets and they maybe get pushed to the back of the box in my case. And it's always fun to get them out again, especially after you see somebody else using them, you think, oh, wow, well, yeah, I haven't gotten that, that stamp set or that die out for a while I have a play. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull off my tape. And we'll take a look. So here you can see how beautifully that gets positioned on there. Pull this up a little bit more. Hopefully you can see that. So pretty, so easy to do. I just love this effect. So then what you can do, of course, is add color to your top flower too. And again, start with your orientation in the center. Pop that down. Uh, brush off the cat fur. That's another crafting tip. <laughs> you've got, if you've got pets in your crafting area, just be aware that there will be pet fur in there as well. So I've got two cats that are usually my, um, my helpers, my companions, but they're both asleep in the other room. So it's late for them. <laughs> Okay, and I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of the same ink and again come around here and add in some color. Now I'm using just one color of ink, of course. You may be thinking, hey, wait, can I, you know, blend a couple of different colors? Of course you can. You can, you've got a lot of freedom with this combination. But you can see just how easy this is to add some color and some style in here. Okay, so that is our coral berry. Pop this off. Now, I think this is really pretty the way it is, and um, you could leave it as is, add a sentiment on here. So like, I've got this little snippet. I didn't, I uh, printed it out, but I didn't have a place to use it. So I'm thinking you could just pop this down and call it good, but you can also add some color with the leaves. So let me show you this. So this is the exact same process. I'm going to start with this large leaf down here and I've got the large leaf here on my stencil. And again, just pop this down. I'm trying to reuse my tape here, so bear with me while I unstick it from itself. Pop that down. Any kind of low tack tape will do for this. Now, when you do this, I will point out you don't want to kind of stick it down into the cardstock area because it can, even if it's really low tack tape, it can kind of pull up. Okay, so for this, frayed leaf is one of my favorite leaf colors of green in the Alt New line. Although I have a, I have a weakness for the greens, so this is just one that I tend to go to time and time again. And I'm going to use my really nice ergonomic Altenew brush for this. And again, I want to be aware of this area down here just so that I don't end up with um, leaves in places I don't want. So just got a little sticky note here and I'll mask that area off. Okay, and then just blend this color on. And again, I'm just going, starting with light pressure, and kind of a rounded circular um, effect. So let's see how this looks. Just really pretty. Really, really love that. So easy to do. This is the fun of Altenew, is that it's easy to do. It looks great. Let's see. This one is going to be this little guy here. We'll just take a look. We'll go around and get them all aligned. And then take a look at our results. I'm going to mask off this piece here and over here. And the rest, I'm going to be really careful. Oops, and this one here. You can use scrap paper for this. Sticky notes do help to kind of hold everything together, though. Okay, and again, just a quick blending. Start light, because you can always add more ink, of course. 
And I really like these blending brushes because they do have such a nice, large, even uh, blending surface. So here's our second leaf. Me in there, it just really looks so rich and pretty. Okay. And then we've got our other one coming along here. And I'll pop this down, sticky notes and tape. No more sticky notes. Okay. So this is one of those sets, I think, again, that can be used for so many different occasions. I mean, the sentiments notwithstanding, I think you can use an image like this for birthday, wedding, anniversary, so many different um, occasions. And I like that it is so large, it's so unusual in that way, it really does make a nice statement. Okay, and then our last one, all my masks in place here. And then add this in. And again, you could leave out the leaves if you wanted to, but I really like how it adds to the overall look. Okay, then I'm just going to click this little guy back in here, which is nice because then I don't end up with ink, straight ink everywhere any more than I normally do. Okay, and then there we go. So you've got a beautiful color, lots of really nice shading. And again, you can mix and match your ink colors on here. You can go for a really soft look like we've got, but you could also do bright and bold as well. So this is the first way, the first card, the first way to combine our stamps and stencil. So this was a new process for me, which I really, I really like. I hadn't had a chance to do this before. So really happy. Now with the rest of the card here, I just over stamped the you are great. So this is also from the same stamp set. And then um, added this you can do anything. Now that little bit is up on some foam tape. And then I've just trim this piece down and put it onto the front of a, a slimline card. And the card is, let's see, measure it with my, with my Misty. The card is eight inches by a little more than three inches, almost three and a half inches. So this is a really nice different card format. It gives you some more different design styles. Okay, so that is our first card and a great way to combine with this uh, coloring stencil. Okay, so I'm gonna toss that aside. I'm gonna move these to the side and we'll take a look at another way to use this. We're gonna go in a completely different direction with some shimmer sprays. Okay, so move this out of my way, clear the space. And let's talk about this. So I really like to use shimmer sprays um, necessarily for spraying, although I do like to spray with them. I also like to paint in images with them. So these are two of the Alta New ink sprays. These are metallic shimmer. So it says in really small letters down here, I'm using the orange cream and the mountain mist, but there are loads of different colors. And um, I have a quite small collection. Um, they will last you forever. Even if you're spraying a lot and you're using them a lot, um, they will last you a really long time. So I'm going to be using the two of these to color in our stamped image, paint in our stamped image. So for this, I'm going to make sure that I also have my water mister on hand because I'm going to dilute this color. These colors are strong. They are really, really concentrated, really, really vibrant, um, which is great, but I also want to get a little bit um, of softness in here too and some contrast. So let me grab again my Misty, move this out of the way. And while I'm doing this, just a hello to everybody else who has joined us so far. It's been I'm going to kind of watching out of the corner of my eye as the comments and hellos are coming in. So it is great to see everybody. 
I think it was Avril who just posted a hello. So hello to you. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Again, I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock. Now this is this is some pretty sturdy cardstock. Um, because I'm going to be working with a watery medium, I don't want something that is too lightweight. You could do this with watercolor cardstock as well. That's if you've got some on hand. Okay, so I'm going to scoot this down just a little bit. And there we go. Okay, so I know I'm not going to be able to get everything on this one piece, but I'll get quite a bit of it. Enough to show you. Now again, I'll be working with the Obsidian Pigment my favorite. <laughs> and this is important too because in working with water-based mediums, a dye ink, if I'm stamping this with a dye ink, it will um, smear when I add the water to it. So just want to be careful about that. Now um, you could also do heat embossing with this as well. So keep that in mind. I'm going to do a, a bit of heat embossing with our next project too. Okay, so there we go. It stamps beautifully. I mean, it really, really is just such a quick and easy um, either background or focal element. I love this. Okay, so again, let's pull this off. Clean off my, oh, my poor Misty. <laughs> we're, we're, a good, uh, we're a good team, though. Okay, so now what I can do is start coloring in my images. And I'll move these out of the way. And we'll talk a little bit about the sprays. Now, normally, of course, when you think of an ink spray, you think of, you know, it's got the pump on there that you would just spray this. And you can definitely do that. Um, we're going to be painting in with it. So I'm working on my craft mat. I've also got a paintbrush. You can use a water brush if you have one um, that is clean, which is not the case at my house today. They're all occupied, so I just grabbed a paintbrush. Um, and the other thing I want to have on hand, because I want to dilute the color of it, is just a bottle of water. And I'm going to um, add some color onto my craft mat. Now, this has a mixative in it, a mixing ball. So I'm gonna shake this until I can hear that ball rattling. Okay, so you can hear that in there. And then what I'm going to do is just decant a bit, take this off and use the tube, straw, I'm not sure what the technical term is, just to get a bit of it onto my craft mat. You don't need to dump it down, you don't need to spray it onto your craft mat because that's going to go lots of different directions. This will give you just a little concentrated puddle, that's all you need. And then I'm going to add some water up here in a little puddle. And I'm going to create um, kind of a medium tone, a wash here. So you can see that I'm, I'm able to get dark, really light, and kind of medium in here. So this is what I'm going for. Now the nice thing about the shimmer sprays is that they do have a shimmery effect to them, which is going to give you a really rich and beautiful look when it's dry. And so I'm just going to color this in. Again, I always like to start from the center of the flower and kind of work my way out because I feel like I can manage the intensity of color rather than like starting at the top and working my way down, for example. So I'm just kind of going out from the center and then picking up some more color. And I can go over the lines without worrying about them smearing or blurring, going everywhere. And you do not have to heat set this pigment ink. So the obsidian is a pigment-based ink, which means that you can use it with embossing as well. Um, but what I like about it is that it is not um, staying wet so long that you can't go straight into coloring your image. So I think that's something quite unique about this, which I really like. And of course it gives you that just really nice crisp black. And we stampers like a good crisp black ink pad. It's the classic. Okay, so I'm just coming along here and just giving everything 
kind of the same, the same treatment, the same shading. You can, you can do a lot with shading with these if you enjoy doing that kind of thing. Um, oops. Um, there's lots of opportunity for this. So you'll notice my paper is bending a little bit because I've got quite a watery mix in here. If you feel better or feel more secure, you can also tape this down with painter's tape. So now I've got this first um, section colored in. Then I can go back, just add a little bit more orange to my light puddle, and I can go back and add some more detail. So, and thank you for sharing. I notice that quite a few of you are commenting that you're joining in and that you're sharing, so that is fantastic. Okay, so now I'm just going to be adding a little bit more color in here. I'm working wet, in, uh, wet into wet, which means that this hasn't dried yet for me to, I can also wait and go back and add, you know, dry this in between and then go back and add um, more color, but we're just gonna go for it. Okay, and I'm really just following the little lines on the stamp set. I think I saw a comment, oh, Sue, yes, you said you like that it, it's so big that when you stamp, it goes off the card. Yeah, I like that too. I think it gives you a really nice image that it's just a, a super versatile stamp set. I know this is one that I'm gonna be pulling out time and time again. I was tasked with making 11 thank you cards for a volunteer group that I work with. And um, I turned to Altenew because I was looking for something that would give me a really beautiful card, but one that I could do the same for everybody and it would have, um, you know, kind of an assembly line process. And I used the um, Peony uh, layered 3D die, the Peony die and um, cut it from pattern paper. And it was super easy to do and it was so therapeutic. There's something kind of relaxing about doing like assembly line process cards. Okay, so here is our flower. Now I, I can tell that you're not getting the shine of the shimmer, you're getting the shine of the wet um, spray. But when this dries, it will give a really nice soft shimmer. Let's see if the camera can pick this up. You'll see it in the areas that are a bit more concentrated, maybe down here on the green. It's very soft, it's very subtle. It's not glittery, it's not really luminescent, it's just very soft and subtle. It just adds a really nice effect to it. So we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna come back and just dab in to the center here, give a little bit of a darker look here in the center. And we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna clean off my brush and then come back and do the leaves. Now the leaves are done with Mountain Mist. Again, I need to give this a bit of a shake to get that mixing ball rattling. And again, I'll just decant a little bit of this. Let's add more, but um, this, maybe this is why mine is lasting me so long. I'm just using it in little bits. Um, it just adds such a pretty effect and you don't need to do a lot. So I love, I love good value <laughs> crafting products. Okay, so got again a bit of water here and we'll just make a bit of a wash. And same process as before. I'm just gonna come in and color, starting with the biggest leaf here. And just add my color straight on. And what I really like too about this same stamp set is that you can do a very um, flat painted effect. You can also do, as I mentioned, if you do lots of shading and highlighting and, and um, doing that either with paints or with the artist markers or colored pencils, then you will have a ball with this because it's a nice large image. It gives you lots of area to color. And Yet, if you want it to be quite simple, you can leave it that way too. I love having the choices. <laughs> oh, it looks like I, I missed the one of the petals back here. 
I suppose you could say that was a leaf. Okay, I'll come up here and do this one as well just to get a quick color in there. Okay. So while this is still a little bit wet, again, I'm gonna come in with a medium range color of the same green. Of course, if you've got different shades of green, you could work some of those in too. Do some blending with different shades of a color. That's also fun. But there's a lot that you can do with a single color of um, the shimmer spray. And here we go. So I'm just, again, I'm just following the lines. Really could not be simpler. Following the lines um, that are on the stamp. So you can see the difference between this one, which has just been painted in with kind of a quick light layer. And then we start get, getting in to add some of the detail and some of the darker area on there too. And again, you're getting the shine. I can see the shine of the shimmer but I think you're getting the shine of the wet medium. Oh, uh, Linda's asking if I'm using watercolor cardstock. No, I'm not. Um, I'm using a good sturdy weight cardstock, a smooth cardstock, but it is not watercolor. Um, you can definitely use watercolor. Uh, I would suggest when you're shopping for it to keep in mind that um, if you have a really detailed, finely detailed stamp like this one, you may want to look for um, cardstock that doesn't have a lot of texture to it. You know, sometimes it can be, um, depending on whether you're getting the cold press or the hot press, depending on um, the weight of it and so on, you can get some extra texture in there, which means that when you stamp it, it may not stamp quite as crisply as if you're using a smooth cardstock, but you can find some really good smooth watercolor cardstock. Um, mixed media cardstock is also really nice for stuff like this. So I hope that answers your question. And Linda's in Somerset, England. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so this is all I would need to do with this portion of the card. Now with my original, I'm gonna reach over here and bring back in the die. And I'm not going to do the die cutting, but I do just want to show you this. So you can see, this is how big it is. So all you need to do then is, of course I would use this on a larger piece of paper, die cut this, and then you've got your various elements. So let me show you again my card original. Hang on, got to move all my piles in different areas. So here I've die cut around the outside edge. I think you can see that it's up on foam tape. I love popping things up on foam tape. So I have this all on foam tape. I've trimmed off this because it was the design was too big for my card. So I use those endy bits and just put them up here. <laughs> so I use the off cuts to add a little bit more of a frame on here. Now this. Uh, these little dots that you see on here, this is, you guys know I love to do spattering. This is kind of spattering, but uh, not really. Let me see if I have a spare piece of cardstock. And you know what I'll do? I'll use it on the back of this. So pretend this is a nice, crisp new uh, piece of cardstock. So what you can do, you can spray this, of course. You can also just undo this to have the nozzle and tap this like so. And this I find sometimes gives me a little bit more um, larger dots rather than a fine misting. It also gives me a little bit more control um, than spraying. So this is another fun way to get uh, some color and some of the shimmer on there. And when you do this, you will definitely get um, a lot of the shine from the shimmer in the metallic spray. So that's what I did for the background here. Oops, I'm gonna toss that to one side. And you can see, you know, probably the larger areas over here. So that's a nice way to um, create a background that will match in here. Uh, what size card is it, Sue? Let me check. Hang on a sec. Okay. Use my Misty to measure. So this is five inches by six and a half. So six and a half this way, five that way. 
Okay, so and that is our second card down. So we've got another one that I want to show you. And I'm excited about this technique because it gives you such an easy card design really quickly, really simply. And this is, you know, I love my embossing. Heat embossing is one of my favorite techniques and one that I use quite a lot because I love that it. it gives you instant shine, instant dimension, instant style, and is really quick and easy to do. So on this card, I'm using just a piece of um, teal cardstock, and I'm also using my embossing ink. By the way, this is well used, well loved. That's why mine looks a little bit disreputable. Yours will be crisp and clean when you get it. And then I'm also using the copper embossing powder. So I really like the copper and the teal together. Kind of makes me think of, um, I don't know, like turquoise or something, turquoise and metallic, I really like. So I've just got this as my background and then the, the little um, snippet from the stamp set too. So let's take a look at this. I want to show you how these emboss our flower embosses. Okay, so got my teal cardstock here. And this one is slightly textured, actually. I found this in my stash and just thought, oh, it's such a pretty color. I'm ready for spring colors. So this was my way to celebrate what little spring we're starting to have. Okay, so I'm gonna get the magnets in place and ink up my um, stamp. Now I will say that uh, a friend and I were just talking recently. So when you have friends who also stamp, this is the kind of thing you talk about, getting the re-inker because I was doing some embossing with this and it was starting to get a little, as you can tell, I've had this for a long time, starting to get a little bit dry. And so um, I fortunately had the re-inker and the friend that I was talking to said she had a, um, a dye ink that she was re that she really loved. She hadn't used it for a while, pulled it out of her stash and realized that it was dry. And she is in the UK and there was nowhere for her to go out to the shop to, um, to get a, a re-inker. And of course, shipping has <laughs> has been tricky in a lot of places over here in Europe and the UK. So she was bemoaning the fact that she did not get a re-inker while she got the ink pad. So we were talking about, yeah, that's the one thing that we always, we know, you know, we know to do this, but sometimes forget. Okay, so I like to go back and have a, a second go round just to make sure that all of my areas here. You can see a bit of a bald spot in that flower. Okay, there we go. And then I'll just move this off and grab my piece of scrap paper here. This is going to catch my excess embossing powder. I'll pop this in here and then just add my copper embossing powder right on top. And you guys probably know the drill. You just need to let that coat around here and then you've got your embossing powder onto your cardstock now before i <laughs> before i sneeze or something i'm going to get this back into the jar so hang in there with me while well, i just funnel this back in and find the lid for it this is also important before you do your heat embossing now I notice that I have some little spare bits of embossing powder here. So this is where I'm going to grab another little paintbrush. Now this is a dry brush, which is important. Don't use one that has been uh, just used for wet mediums. And then just come in and clean this up. Now, depending on whether you're doing heat embossing or excuse me, uh, die cutting, you may not worry about what's going on out here if you're die cutting it, but especially going around some of these finer details, I always just like to go through with a fine tip brush 
give it a gentle tap. I know it's tempting to give it a big thwack on the back, but sometimes that removes more, more than you want. Okay, so gentle tap, and then we can heat set. So hang in there with me for a sec. I'm gonna heat set this, and then we will take a look at how this looks with a beautiful copper shine. Okay, there we go. We've got this all heat set. Oops, I've got a, a missed a spot over here. Okay, now I think we're all sorted. So take a look. Just look at the shine. It is so pretty. I love the copper. It's something a little bit different. You know, I love my uh, gold embossing inks. I love working with the clear but there's something about the copper that's just a little bit different and just, yeah, just a little bit different. Sue says she likes their rose gold. Yeah, I'm partial to the rose gold as well. That's one of my favorite uh, embossing powder colors, but try the copper, Sue. Tell me what you think if you get a chance. So now with this, all I've done is trim this down and then added my sentiment on here. So while we've been looking, you know, like with our other cards, these are really more of the focal of the card. This really lets the floral imagery kind of go into the background, which is also nice. It's nice to have it as a background image. And you could actually, you know, fill in some of these open areas too. turn the stamp around, stamp off the edges. Oops, keep your sequins together. Stamp off the edges if you wanted to. You could fill that space if you want to as well. So. You could even, Sue, do your rose gold in some other areas as well. So you could have mix your metals on there too. So this is what I'm thinking of as one of the quickest, easiest card designs, which I really like. I like having something that I can kind of keep in the back of my mind as a design that I can knock out quite quickly, quite easily, but still looks really impressive thanks to that big, beautiful flower. So on here, we've got You Can Do Anything, which who wouldn't like to get a card that says that? And then the other elements that I have on here, these are the sequins. These are the um, antique gold sequins. So I've just got a couple of those glued on there and um, just as little accents. So that is our third card. Now, I think we have enough time to look at one more if you guys are not too busy or bored <laughs> okay let's look at the last i'll try and squeeze in the last one here so with this card building off of the embossing now this one has been embossed with the copper i think you can see the shine on there onto white cardstock so i've got the stamped embossed area on here and what i'm going to do is grab my stencil again We'll come back to our color spot stencil and we're going to combine the stenciling with our embossing so it's possible to do this with um stenciling and embossing too so again good thing i have my dot on here because i just tossed the stencil to one side so this one i'm going to pop this in place and again try and tack this down And with this one, I'm going to use a little bit of lava rock. So I'm going to be using some gray as well as some of my coral, the coral berry. So again, I'm going to grab my brush. This is still um, a bit coral 
buried from before. I'm going to start with this, and again, just using my circular motion on here, I'm just going to add a bit of that coral berry. And then I'm going to come in with the lava rock. And that is just going to tone down and give this um, coral a slightly soft, kind of dusky look. Dusty rose. And I love using the gray inks with flowers because I think it just gives such a soft kind of vintage look to them. And this will be really pretty in combination with the copper of our uh, embossing. Okay. So then when I pull this off, you can see it's definitely a different look than what we've got with the Coral Bliss over here. So you can see that this really tones it down. It just really, really softens it. Now again, you could go quite uh, dark and dramatic with that. You can also just go straight to the, um, the gray on here. Let's see, let's get this turned around. And there we go. <laughs> this is the game of turning the stencil. Make sure you've got it in the right place. Easier to do after you've <laughs> had a fun day, maybe not one where you're doing grade four math. Okay, so I'm going to grab this lava rock again. And instead of starting with the pink, now this probably has some, still has some pink on it, but let's take a look at what it looks like with just the gray. Okay. And to clean these brushes, I normally just clean off the excess ink. If I'm switching colors up, then, you know, you can wash these little guys. You can wash the, um, the Alta New ones as well. Just rinse them and then let them dry, air dry. Okay, let's see how this one looks. The gray. So I think that's really pretty, really striking. And again, you've got that nice shine from the copper embossing. Let's see, camera, which way am I going? There we go. So super, super easy, really nice, and quite quick to do as well. So we just had a couple of minutes left and put it, I think, to some good use. So again, let me bring back in this other card. You can take a look as a reminder. So I've added in the sentiment here. Let's do what we love and do a lot of it. This has been stamped with the gray as well. And then again, adding some more of those sequins in there too. Now you could um, add another portion of the, one of the stamp sentiments on here if you wanted to as well, but I kind of like having it all nice and flat on there. Yeah, perfect, Carol. Yeah, perfect for a wedding or anniversary card. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. So that is, let's see, we've done one, two three, four cards this evening. So hopefully we have had a fun time exploring the Courageous You combination. So what I'm gonna do is tidy up my space a little bit and I'm going to change my camera back and go through the products that we have been working with and show you that just one more time. So bear with me, here we go. Okay, great. So everything's working. Technology worked today, which is wonderful. Sometimes it does and sometimes it does its own thing. So let's go through just again, I'll remind you guys what stamp set we're working with. This is the Courageous You, beautiful, huge floral image. Obviously, we can do this in lots and lots of themes, but they've also got lots of sentiments on here. You are great, dare to be different, and the one I'm going to put to use, um, Hey Warrior, keep going. So that's great. Uh, then other things that we have had, hang on, which I cannot find. Well, I'll just show you the packaging. It's the stencil that goes along, so the Courageous You Simple Coloring Stencil, and that's going to give us this effect here. If you want to do your die cutting, of course, there is a big, beautiful die to go along with this, and this will allow you to create even more dimension 
like with this card. So we've been working with inks today. We were working also with our metallic color sprays. Now these are just a great classic to have on hand. So if you haven't worked with your metallic sprays for a while, you may wanna dig those out and have a go see, um, see about painting with them and doing some different kinds of splattering rather than spraying. So hopefully this will give you a couple of ideas to carry through the weekend. I hope you have a wonderful uh, creative rest of the week and weekend. It has been great to be back here with everyone. So thank you so much for joining me for this hour. We're almost perfectly at an hour. Thank you, Joanna, for um, handling all of the um, comments that I didn't see and popping in the links. You've got a couple more minutes before I sign off to share. Be sure to post and let us know that you shared. And Joanna will pick a lucky winner. I think I saw that Oram had joined us tonight too. So it's lovely always, always, always to see our Oram. So hello, Oram. And um, yeah, I'm just glancing quickly at some of the comments. Thank you, Ziamara. Thank you, Carol, Kimberly, Janice. And so many of you who have joined us tonight. And a big thank you to Altenew for um, providing us with this opportunity to get together and be inspired. So take good care. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the week and weekend. And I will catch you again quite soon. If you are in my Altenew Zoom class, the Hyacinth class, um, we will be meeting next week. And so um, if you're not, do check out Altenew's classes because we've got some really fun um, workshops, smaller workshops where we are crafting together. So if you're interested in that, um, have a look on the Altenew website and you may be joining us soon, which would be fantastic. Okay, everybody, I am going to say a uh, good night to you all. Do take care, stay safe, and I will see you again next time. <laughs>